Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 4 of the chapter, The Solid State. Moving on with our discussion of the unit cells and the brevet lattices or the lattice systems, let me now explain to you what are the basic uh, different kinds of unit cells. There are seven basic types of unit cells and how the different arrangements of these unit cells of where the uh, particles are present on the lattice points or uh, as the centered unit cells what are the 14 possible brevet lattices that are possible so let us now start understanding these uh, systems or the unit cells and the systems the lattice systems one by one the first type of crystal system is a cubic unit cell the unit cell is as you know a cubic unit cell is one where uh, it is like a cube where all the lattice points and the primitive cubic cell would have all the uh, lattice points that is all the corners of the cube occupied by atoms so each one of these corner cubes they are the ones that are uh, that are occupied they are the ones which are uh, which are atoms and when you join the lines, the centers of each of these atoms, you find that they result in the formation of a cube. So in a cube, what do you have? The different sides, that is the length, breadth and the height. All of them, length, breadth and the height, all of them are equal. So all sides are equal, that is A is equal to B is equal to C and all angles, that is the angle between A and B B and C, all of these, all three angles, they are 90 degrees. So a cubic unit cell is one which is cubic in nature and the primitive unit cell, it has what are the possible variations in a cubic unit cell? You can have a primitive unit cell where all the corners are occupied. You can have a body centered one that is one in the middle. So if you have these corners all occupied, then if you see this in the middle, this one, what would this be? This would be a face centered cube. If you really see the one in the middle is a face centered, it is in the center of a face. So a face centered cube and if you imagine the cube which falls between all the face centers, that one would be the body center. So that is one variation that is possible, the primitive unit cell and the body centered where there is one cube or one ball in the center and the face centered as you can see these are all face centered where every face in the center of each face you have a ball or a cube here it is a cube actually uh, the atoms we imagine them to be spheres and there is one variation which is not mentioned here which you will be doing later and which is edge centered and since I'm holding the Rubik's cube it is easy for me to explain it to you right now. You see on the edge, each edge, in the center of each edge also you have a cube. So such cubes are edge centered. So they are edge centered and of course the end centered are top and bottom that you already know of. So in the cubic lattices what are the different kinds of variations that are seen? Uh, in nature, we find that the cubic lattices show the primitive variation, the body centered variation and the face centered. So there are three possible cubic uh, lattices, the brevet lattices. So here I've made a cubic lattice and I told you that there are three possible variations here. This is a simple cubic lattice where A is equal to B is equal to C and the angles, beta angle, gamma, uh, alpha angle and the gamma angle on top all of these are equal and all of them are 90 degrees so it is a cubic a proper cubic arrangement what are the axial distances or the edge lengths the edge lengths are represented by a b and c so a is equal to b and is equal to c and the angles all three angles alpha beta and gamma are 90 degree examples of cubic lattices are sodium chloride zinc blend and copper come to the second category now you have a tetragonal arrangement. What is a tetragonal arrangement? A tetragonal arrangement would be, instead of a cube now, you imagine this, A is equal to B, the two sides are equal, but C is not equal to it. So, instead of a cube, you have a cuboid. Although this is not an exact cuboid, uh, 
but still I'm using it for uh, explaining the tetragonal. Imagine that this side, although they are not equal, imagine that these two sides were equal and the third side was not. So you'll have the tetragonal arrangement is a cuboidal arrangement. And here, what is again that, what are the possible lattice uh, points that are occupied or systems that you would see? The primitive, that is all corners occupied. And the second possibility is the body centered. Although there is a possible, you can imagine face centers, you can imagine edge centers, but it has been found that in all those compounds or crystals which have the tetragonal, uh, this thing, uh, tetragonal unit cells, they usually show only two variations that are primitive and body center. So what are the lengths, that is dimensions, of the uh, edges for a tetragonal unit cell? For a tetragonal unit cell, a is equal to B, but it is not equal to two sides are equal, but let us say length and breadth are equal, the height is different. So the third side is not equal to the other two. Then what about the angles? The angles are all right angles, that is A is equal to B, length is to breadth, breadth is to height and breadth, uh, height is to uh, length. All of them are, all angles are 90 degrees. Examples of this kind of arrangement are white tin, that is uh, uh, tin oxide, tellurium oxide and calcium sulfate. Here is the tetragonal arrangement. You can see it is cuboidal in shape. A is equal to B but it is not equal to C and all angles are 90 degrees and it has two variations that is the primitive and the body centered. The third kind of unit cell is the orthorhombic. An orthorhombic system would be, you know, it is like a cube, but the only, a cuboid, but the only thing is that the cuboid is, is not uh, at right angles. Let us see what the, an orthorhombic arrangement is where A is not equal to B is not equal to C. All three, now this is actually orthorhombic. A is not equal to B is not equal to C and Alpha, beta and gamma are all 90 degrees. So this is actually an orthorhombic, uh, the true orthorhombic uh, shape. So you have A is not equal to B, is not equal to C and the angles, but the angles are all right angles. Do you see? This is all right angles. So that is an orthorhombic shape and this has the maximum number of uh, lattice variations. That is, you have the primitive, you have the body centered in this, you have face centered and you have end centered. So let us, let me explain each one of these one by one. Uh, taking a cube, the first you have is primitive where all the corners are occupied. Then comes the body centered, the one in the center, the one, the one ball that is not visible to us in the middle. That one is uh, body centered. The face center is the center of each face is a uh, is one of the of all the six phases faces the central part that is occupied in the case of the orthorhombic shape I'm showing it to you in a cube but you have to imagine it in this you have to imagine it in a orthorhombic shape so uh, and you have face centered and you have end centered and I explained to you that end centered means that on two opposite ends the centers of the faces of two opposite ends makes it an end centered unit cell so these are the different variations possible in orthorhombic, primitive, body centered, face centered and end centered. What are the dimensions of the orthorhombic arrangement? A is not equal to B, is not equal to C. All the three sides have different lengths, but all three angles are 90 degrees. But alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma and it is equal to 90 degrees. And the example of this kind of a crystal would be rhombic sulfur, potassium nitrate and barium sulfate. And I've made this diagram of orthorhombic. There are four types of crystal systems possible here. Then the next one is hexagonal. The hexagonal shape, as you see here, the actual unit cell is not uh, the entire hexagon. You see this? This is the hexagonal arrangement. This is actually how an ex a hexagon is. Now imagine that in this diagram, this hexagon is lying here and you're using this, this part which I marked out. Do you see if you just cross it like this, this one and this. So what would what would the uh, angle here be? The angle here would be 100 and 
the angle here would be 120, right? And if you come down, imagine that this comes down in this shape, you have the walls coming down and the same base being formed. So you see the arrangement as a kind of a cuboid which is slightly twisted. So if you imagine this shape to be that cuboid which is kind of which is kind of twisted at an angle. Oops, this may actually break. So let us imagine that this is like a cuboid at an angle. Instead of being straight like this, you imagine that it is kind of a little twisted, a little tilted to one side. So the angles are not all 90 degree now. So what are the for a primitive for a hexagonal uh, unit cell you would have only one variation that is the primitive only the lattice sites only the lattice points are occupied and the actual primitive cell is not hexagonal in shape the actual one is like this it is like a uh, it's like a cuboid which is or I would rather say it is more like the orthorhombic one but with a variation so what are the dimensions a is equal to b but the third size is not equal so this is like a cuboid or tetragonal arrangement but as for angles is concerned it is different from tetragonal in or in tetragonal shape all angles are 90 degrees but here the gamma angle is 120 degrees while alpha and beta are 90 degrees length is to breadth and breadth is to height are both 90 degrees but here this angle is 120 degrees so that is what uh, the hexagonal arrangement would be like what are the examples of crystals which have this hexagonal arrangement you have graphite you have zinc oxide and you have cadmium sulfide so this was the next kind of arrangement that is hexagonal the fifth kind of unit cell is the rhombohedral or it is also called trigonal. The rhombohedral also, this also has only one variation that is the primitive. And what are the dimensions for the rhombohedral? Look at the figure here. Rhombohedral has all equal sides. It's like a cube. All sides are equal. A is equal to B is equal to C. That is length is equal to breadth is equal to height. But all angles are uh, are wonky they are not 90 degrees they are all tilted so alpha but all of them are the same angle so alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma but they are not equal to 90 degrees they are all equal but they're not 90 degrees so you would find the cube to be tilted slightly on all sides such an arrangement is known as the rhombohedral or the trigonal Examples of such crystals would be calcite, that is calcium carbonate, and cinnabar, that is mercuric sulfide. And if you really look at the structure here, the rhombohedral is this. It appears to be a cube which is twisted, do you see? It is tilted, a tilted cube. And it has only one arrangement, that is the primitive arrangement. And then we come to the next kind of arrangement, that is monoclinic. Monoclinic, you must have heard about monoclinic sulfur and rhombic sulfur. So the rhombic sulfur is rhombohedral and monoclinic sulfur would come here. Monoclinic arrangement has, there are two possibilities, primitive and end-centered. End-centered, you understand, where the centers of two opposite faces are also occupied by uh, the constituent um, atoms or molecules or ions. For a monoclinic arrangement, a is not equal to B is not equal to C. It means all the three sides are not equal. And the angles alpha is equal to beta. Both of them are 90 degrees. But uh, alpha is equal to gamma, which is 90 degrees. But beta is not equal to 120 degrees. Unlike this, where you had alpha equal to beta uh, is 90 degrees and gamma is 120. Here, alpha is equal to beta, which is 90 degrees, but gamma or the third angle is one not 120 degree it is different but it is not 90 but it's not 120 and the angle is not specified it could be any angle examples of this kind of uh, crystals would be monoclinic sulfur sodium sulfate and the diagram here you can see that the angles here the angle is different it is not 120 like in hexagonal but alpha and beta are 90 degrees that is length is to breadth and breadth is to height are 90 degrees but on top that angle is different so now is the last kind of uh, unit cell which is known as the triclinic the triclinic if you really 
see out of all these arrangements that we are studying as we kept coming down the we started with the most symmetrical form that was the cubic form and as we come down we find that one of the sides is not matching one of the angles is not matching more than one angles is not matching or side and angle both are not matching that is uh, uh, symmetrical 90 degrees and then finally we come to triclinic which does not believe in any rules here none of the things is matches with another one so this is triclinic is the extreme or uh, what um, what should i say uh, there is order but with maximum disorder in the basic arrangement so it has only one form again triclinic uh, sorry primitive arrangement and what are the uh, what are the dimensions a is not equal to b is not equal to c alpha is not equal to beta is not equal to gamma and none of them is equal to 90 degrees so all sides are different all angles are different and none of them is a 90 none of them is a right angle and so the most twisted arrangement would be the triclinic one. Examples are potassium dichromate, copper sulfate, and boric acid. And this is the example of triclinic arrangement. And in the laboratory, you would be crystallizing copper sulfate crystals. And uh, when, when you get those crystals, you're really going to enjoy the, uh, the shape of these. And you must, I would encourage you to really observe the shapes of crystals when you go to the laboratory next. And, you, and the more you uh, watch those shapes, you're going to appreciate how beautiful uh, they are and how beautiful these arrangements. And if you can make out the angles and get an idea of the crystal, it would be wonderful. So triclinic also has only the primitive kind of arrangement. So on the basis of this, what do we understand? Cubic arrangement has three kinds of lattices, can produce three kinds of brevet lattices. Tetragonal, two. Orthorhombic, four. Hexagonal, one. Rhombohedral, one. Monoclinic, two. And triclinic, one. And if you find the sum of all of these, it comes out to 14 brevet lattices. And according to Brevet, there are only 14 possible crystal systems. There can be only 14 types of uh, unit cells on the basis of which the crystal, on expansion of which the different crystals in all the crystals that are known to us, they fall into one of these 14 categories of unit cells. So this was uh, unit cells and the Brevet lattices. And with this, I'll finish this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.